Okay, now we're going to move on to joint types. Now there are three main types of joints, okay, and then within each of the, these joints there are certain classifications. So the first type of joint are known as immovable or fibrous joints, okay? Ones that don't move. So immovable joints don't move and their main role is for protection. So think about the skull. We don't want that joint to move, otherwise the brain would be in danger. Then you've got slightly movable or cartilaginous joints. So think about the spine. They move slightly to allow you to move forward and back and side to side. But then if you try to move your spine too far or past its natural range of movement, then it could lead to injuries. And then finally, you have freely movable or synovial joints. And think about your knee or your elbow or your shoulder. These are synovial joints and they allow you to move the most freely okay, and provide a lot of movements that you would use in the gym or when you're performing exercises. Point is our joints because our joints are necessary for us, the muscles to be able to move the bones on one another. And I can demonstrate some aspects of joints for you using this pelvis. First of all, the bones have to be very carefully held together. And the structures that do this are ligaments. Ligaments are these very, very tough connective tissue sheaths that extend from one bone to another bone. They're tightly bound to the bone at each side so that the bones can't come apart. And indeed, if you fall awkwardly or pull your uh, bones awkwardly, a rip in one of these uh, ligaments or a strain in one of these ligaments is known as a sprain. A sprain is when you actually damage the ligamentous sheath of the bones. In real life, bones are capped by a special structure called cartilage. And cartilage is, forms the interface between one bone and another bone. It all, it's the glistening gristle that you see on uh, uh, bones in, in meat. But it has a very important structure. It's also constantly remodeled during life. And particularly important for the purpose of especially weight-bearing joints. It's self-lubricating. When one set of cartilage presses on another piece of cartilage, a tiny amount of the fluid inside the cartilage comes onto the surface in a similar way to the way an ice skater is able to skate over the ice on a thin uh, film of fluid. So the cartilage actually glide over one another on a thin film of fluid. And damage to this cartilage is particularly important in a condition, for example, osteoarthritis, where the cartilage gets damaged and the bones begin to grind directly onto one another, uh, which is extremely painful and causes distortion of the bone and limitation of joint movement, as it, and is in fact a very uh, important cause of illness in our society, especially in elderly people. So what is a synovial joint? So synovial joints, such as the hip and shoulder joints, allow free movement. The ends of the bone are covered in cartilage connected by a fibrous capsule which has a synovial membrane. Okay, so this is one bone, this is the other bone. So you've got the end of the bone here and here, they're covered by cartilage and that's going to help the bones stop them grinding, um, e grinding towards each other. Okay, so they're actually there for protection. You've also got this synovial membrane and this synovial membrane either side of the bone helps nourish the joint okay now when you warm up the synovial membrane helps secrete uh, synovial fluid that synovial fluid is then absorbed by the cartilage which again helps you perform your exercises a lot safer and more effectively. So it helps protect your synovial, um, your uh, cartilage, okay? Which is the main reason why we want to warm up, warm up our joints, okay, with pulse raising activities, so that we can secrete the synovial fluid, which is then absorbed by the cartilage, which then helps keep the bone and the joints safe, okay? Other elements that I want to talk about here is that you've got ligaments. So link of ligaments, the function of ligaments is that they connect and they join bone to bone. And as you can see that here, all right? So ligaments join bone to bone. You've got cartilage at the end of the bone, okay? Then you've got your synovial membrane, 
okay, which helps nourish the bone. And then the synovial fluid helps keep the, the joint safe. And I've got the functions here. So you've got the articular cartilage. Articular means if two bones come together or they meet, they articulate. Okay, so articular cut cartilage are the two cartilages that come together. So the function of them is they provide shock absorption and a reduction of friction. Then you have the joint capsule and that's just supply, provides support for the joint. Synovial membrane secretes synovial fluid which lubricates the joint. Then you have synovial fluid and this provides lubrication and nutrition for the joint. Ligaments provide stability for the joint and they <coughs> join bone to bone. And the periosteum, think of that crunchy bar wrapper, is the tissue that surrounds the bone. Okay, there are different types of synovial joint. So we're going to look at these in um, succession. So the first one is the pivot joint. So if we remember when we talked about the bones of the spine, we said that the first two bones are called the atlas and the axis. All right, and let's see if we can see their function here. Pivot. Okay, so pivot joint, if we look at their movement, atlas and axis, that's basically how the pivot joint works. All right. The next joint is the ball and socket joint. Okay, and if we look at the ball and socket joint, the main example here is the shoulder. Okay, so you've got a concave area here, and then you've got this sort of convex area here, the top part of the humerus, all right? And it basically allows you to do real full movements. And when, when we talk about joint actions, um, you can see the ball and socket joint allows you to do the majority of the joint actions. Then we have the hinge joint. So think about um, a door opening and closing. So an in a hinge joint only allows you to move um, to bend your arm, for example, look at an elbow, and open your arm. Okay. Gliding joints allow you to... Um, the, the easiest way to think about this is um, your spine, okay? The, the vertebrae glide along each other. Another example, which is the inner part of the collarbone. But the, the best example really to think about is the vertebra and how the, the, the joints slide together. Then you've got condyloid or ellipsoid joints. And again, think about your wrist is the easiest, is the easiest um, example to think about here. Okay, so you've got um, your wrist joints are ellipsoid or condyloid joints. And then finally, you've got the saddle joint. And the example here is your thumb. All right? And that will be the easiest uh Example to think about in terms of the saddle, saddle joint. joint. All right, and that's but. joint has two saddle-shaped articular surfaces. That... Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so that's basically how they are structured. Okay, so if we go back, so an example of a saddle joint is the thumb. The easiest example of a condyloid or ellipsoid joint is your are your wrist. Gliding joint is your vertebra. Pivot joint would be your neck, ball and socket, you can either choose from your hip or your shoulder, hinge joint, the easiest ones are your knee or elbow. Okay, so geez, a couple of activities I'd like you to do just as a review. Okay, you've got your um, synovial joint, which I'd like you to label, thinking about terms of ligaments, um, cartilage, synovial fluid, um, periosteum, synovial membrane. And I want you to write down the function of each part of the synovial joint. Okay, so we've just gone through that a couple of minutes ago. And again, pause the video, go through these activities, 
um, and then play the video again when you're ready for the next activity.